Holy, that's the Holy Spirit behind me right there. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's, he was moving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. And what we'll do, Denny, uh, after the message, you come up. And uh, I just messed that up. Amen. I thought about it during worship. But uh, you can share, and then Gary can take the offering up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Testimonies all over the building. Radical things God's done. Your problem is very easy to God. Extremely easy to God. Now, it's very difficult for you. Amen. But it's very, very easy for God. Jesus said, come unto me those who are, uh, what? Weary and heavy laden. Got a lot of heaviness on you. He said, come to me. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Everybody say, light and easy. How you doing? Light and easy. What if you just started telling people that instead of, well, under the circumstances, I guess I'm going to be all right. What if you said, light and easy. How you doing? Light and easy, man. It just gets better every day for me. I don't know what your story is, but mine sure is not a victim story. Mine is a victory story, amen? I am doing light and easy. See, people don't even know how to say stuff like that. But Jesus said if you walk in with him, it becomes light and easy, not rough and hard. Amen? Well, how do you get there? Praise the Lord. A lot of that has to do with being in the right place at the right time, hearing the right things. Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit speaking to you. And uh, a lot of time in his presence, like the song we just sang. How long could we have sang that? Oh, about four or five hours. Because there's so many people that don't understand that if you don't learn how to get into his presence, you could be in Bible study for 40 years and not get your answer. Amen. Amen. You could be in his presence and not get a word. And if you don't get a word, you just get a lot of Bible study. You turn this thing, like Brother Hockaday said, into a book. And Jesus is not a book. He is the word made flesh. But watch this. You're not going to see a book in heaven. You're going to see a person. And in his presence is where your answer is. Amen. Praise the Lord. So really, I know Tim talks about his chase. I love chase lounges. I love late nights. I love walking the block. I love going. I was thinking about it, and I told uh, Brother Jim when he was here, too, when he's talking about walks with God and getting out and talking to God, beach walks, things like that. I didn't even realize it, but at my beginning of my salvation, I used to, I was over a $3 million gym facility with a walking track up top, and all of the people uh, used to come from that church and used to come there and uh, exercise and do stuff like that, play basketball. I'd beat all the kids in basketball and I'd play with them. And that's how I got my coaching job, actually. But a lot of time there would be nobody there because they didn't use it for outreach, only in reach. And uh, so when I was there sitting around watching TV, the Lord would just tell me to go outside and go walk all the way. The church took up a whole city block. And I mean those times, I believe that, those pipeline times, those back road driving times, I don't know, we get so busy these days with I got to go here, I got to run to this, got to go to that, got to get to this meeting, that meeting, got to see what's scrolling on Facebook. And we don't, we just totally miss the presence of God. And that is where your answer is. Not just in a Bible study, but in His presence. I mean, I mean, it could be fishing, it could be walking around the block till you get, till you just know that, man, it's me and Jesus walking right here. Walking with him, amen? Not about just serving at the church. Not about just that. That's good. You should serve at the church. Matter of fact, your serving at the church really proves how much you are uh, committed to him because he's in heaven, but his body's here. The head of the church is in heaven. The body is here. Can't say you love Jesus and don't love his body. I don't like church. Well, the church is his body. Maybe you're here to help us out, amen? Maybe you're here, here to help us get it right. Say amen. Maybe that's what you're here for. Because a lot of times we go to jobs and we say, I don't like that job. Well, maybe that you're there to change all the people at that job. Maybe you're there to make that just a just to walk in to the job and this turns into a party. How many of you would love to just have a party job? We just come in here to have fun. Praise the Lord. You're having fun. You like your job. You don't have to work a one day in your life. Praise the Lord. I'm finishing up this week, Holy Spirit. And uh, not because I'm finished, just because you can't go forever on the same series. Uh, Holy Spirit, we could talk about for about 30 parts. This is only, I think, part six. 
or seven. Which one, Julia? Seven right here. And uh, we've talked about, we'll do a little review. Holy Spirit is not spooky and strange. Holy Spirit is not a it, he's a him. He's a person, amen? And what you saw in our meetings, really, with Brother Hockaday was him flowing with the Spirit. Jesus came to show us a man living in the, in the flesh but out of the Spirit. See, we're trying to get the answers in our flesh, and it's hard. We're trying to get the victory in our flesh, and it's hard. Your victory is in the Spirit. And that's why I believe the Lord is, this finale even, is a word about that. Your victory is not something you can work up. If you're trying to get the victory, then really you're going to miss and have missed your victory. Your victory has already been won. Amen. Jesus can't do any more to get you a victory. He already shed his blood, died on the cross, was dead, buried, and raised again on the third day. Amen. He paid the price. He said, it is finished. Amen. Then he said, I'm going to send you another, and he called him our helper. We're going to review real fast because we did have meetings galore since our last Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit service. But he first thing Jesus called Holy Spirit was our helper. Say helper. He's not mysterious in all his ways. He's here to say help. And if you have a move of the Holy Spirit, you should have got help. Amen. We said this. If you love the Holy Spirit and you love God a whole lot, you should love to help. Say help. A whole lot. Amen. You're a, once you become a whole lot like God, you love to give. And when you become a whole lot like the Holy Spirit, you love to help. God so loved the world that he gave. Jesus said the Holy Spirit is our great helper. So when you love God, you love to give. And when you love the Holy Spirit and fellowship with him, you love to help. Amen. Amen. So you're not the one needing. I'm, I'm love. See, what you find out, too, is the more you give help, the more you get it. See, the needy body of Christ is not what we're here to display. We are the ones with the answer. How many of you glad I got the answer? I'm not going to get it. I got it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to work. Not the one who's going there to uh, give off uh, negative vibes, they say. I'm going in there with positive. Amen. Faith filled. Love filled. God walked in with me. So if you're having trouble, you're in luck. I just showed up. How many of you glad once you walk in, everything ought to get better? Amen. Now, you may be here today and you need a whole lot of help. There's a Holy Spirit here today. Amen. There should be all kind of different people in here. Those that need help and those who are your help. Amen. There should be very varying kinds of people in here. Some people in here struggling left and right. You're in the right place. Amen. Amen. You're going to hear the right word. Praise God. We, we looked at the Holy Spirit also as the revealer of truth and identity. We saw this the first time that the Holy Spirit fell upon Jesus. The Father said, this is my son. In him I am what? Well, please. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will reveal your identity. That's what most people, most people are experiencing identity theft in the body of Christ. Amen. And we got some life lock for you. Life lock. What does that mean? When the enemy comes in to try to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. How's he going to do it? Your identity. He's lying to you. I'm a loser. I'm no good. I'm ugly. I can't do it. No, I can do all things. I'm, 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 I'm blessed and highly favored. Amen. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. There is not another one like me. I got my own fingerprint, Big Daddy. I walked out of this thing a champion. I walked into this earth a champion. Glory to God. Man, that mentality we get. And when you start seeing who you really are, and I believe that is the greatest work of the Holy Spirit, is to reveal your identity to you. I believe that's His number one way of helping, is show you who you really are. Amen? How many of you love finding out? Wait a minute, I went to read the Bible looking for Jesus, and I started seeing me. The Bible is a mirror. A mirror. And what do you see in a mirror? yourself and you're like I can do all. I can too Paul wait a minute by his stripes I was healed I'm blessed in the city blessed in the field blessed coming in blessed going out I'm the blessed 
I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I'm not the weak. I'm the, let the weak say I am the strong. Praise the Lord. See, you start seeing who you really are. Because the devil been lying for 6,000 years to people. And they think they can't, they ain't, they never will. I don't know what's going on. I don't know, I don't know. You always know. You just got to learn to follow what you do know. Praise God. But the revealer of truth is the second thing we talked about. The third thing that we talked about, amen, we talked a little bit, which we're going to finish on today, being led by the Spirit. Jesus was led by the Spirit as soon as he was filled with the Spirit. Jesus was baptized in the Holy Ghost, then he was led. He was led to the wilderness, and watch, watch what he did. He learned and he showed us how to be born of God, filled with the Spirit of God, and led by the Spirit of God. Jesus was our great example. He didn't come as God to show out. He came as our example. He was born of God. He was filled with the Spirit of God. Fell upon him like a dove in the river Jordan. And then immediately he became led by the Spirit. Now what we're supposed to be is what? Born of God. Born again of God. Filled with the Spirit of God. And what? Led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now there is your victory right there. Because the Bible says he always leads us into victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's not leading you into. See, we get into hard places and always assume he led us there. Could it be that you took the wrong path? How many of you love your little GPS on your phone? But if you don't listen to it, how many of you know this thing can tell you exactly how to get to New York City right now? And it is easy. It is 10 to 95. <laughs> you go look at your 10 to 95. But if you end up in Wyoming and say, well, the Lord's trying to teach me something over here in Wyoming. That's why I'm here. No, you took a wrong turn. Don't put it on God. He's the great GPS. God's positioning. He'll get you right. I'm in the perfect will of God right now, today, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Amen. Now, here's the deal. You got to get good at following. Because what we're going to get on today is that, but we're reviewing right now. But Jesus was led, and you would have thought he would have said, we out here in the wilderness, Holy Ghost, you already messing up. How many of you ever thought your GPS was messing up? You're like, this, this ain't right. You ever talk to your GPS? You big dumb joke. What is it? I, I'll have my Bluetooth in my ear and this left ear, and Danielle's over here talking, kids in the back. And I'm like, you silly, not you, praise the Lord. This GPS is taking us in a weird direction here, and that, that's not right. Like, you know more than the GPS. How I many you know the view that it has is a little different than the view you got? Amen. Danielle just graduates nursing school. Years and years of school, then more years of school. Then to get a nursing degree, and the Lord leads her to another school, Bible school. Other people told her, like her mom, that's not, that's silly. You just got a degree, it's time to go to work. She said, no, I'm going to more school, Bible college. I mean, you know, that don't look like in the natural the right thing to do. It's time to go make that big money that you put all that work into. But most people are led by money, led by jobs, led by opportunity. If the Lord, you know the devil will open you a door. Oh, devil will give you a raise. Oh, whatever. What, if he can keep you out of the plan of God and the will of God, he'd love to give you ten more dollars an hour. He can let you, if he can get your kids busted, disgusted, and out of the word, out of the will, out of the plan of God, wouldn't he give you about a $15 an hour raise? You spend your whole life making $15 more an hour, missing the whole plan of God over here in uh, Seattle, Washington, when you're supposed to be in New York all the way across the country, and the GPS was sending you this way, but your feelings took you this way. Then you say, it must be hard, it's the will of God. You better know that you know that you know. Say amen. And this is all about Holy Spirit led. Jesus probably ended up out in the wilderness facing a devil. And said, why did we come the wrong way? Off, right off the bat, you're messing up. He said, I didn't mess up. I'm taking you where I know you need to be. 
Boy, I went to boys' homes, coached in high schools, done all kind of stuff, and I'm like, we'll go wherever you want to go. And then I started spraying bugs in a pest control company for a while. Then I left that and started the uh, Bible college, then youth pastor, and then the path has been dripping with abundance, but it's been strange. There's been times I'm like, that's not, what am I doing here? What's going on? Amen. How many of you are you're like, what is happening? Well, I wrote a whole book about it, actually. It's called Green Pastures. You are where you are so God can get you to where you're going. Even in secular work, he'll put you there to develop you for the kingdom. God's not growing your kingdom. He's growing his. Now, if you get real, if you will understand that one day, you'll become radically successful. Radically. He's not growing your kingdom and your business. He's growing your business so he can grow his kingdom. He's growing you to grow his kingdom. He's putting leadership skills in you to know how to run that business so you can know how to run things in his kingdom. Never about your kingdom. It's always about his. And he's leading you, not for you, but for his kingdom. He's growing you and developing you so he can get you to a place of being a blessing in his kingdom. That's too much review. Praise the Lord. Next, we talked about, uh, we got on over into baptism of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we talked about uh, scripture that are just, uh, put it up real quick, 2 Corinthians 14, 14, I think it is. I don't have any of those review scriptures on my tablet, but I think that's about where it was. Second, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 14. 1 Corinthians 14, 14, or 14, 12. It says, we pray in the spirit and we also pray in the understanding. Put it up there real quickly if you can. Praise the Lord. I don't have it on my, I don't, I'm just going to read it. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. Uh, 14, 14. Praise the Lord. Okay. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit, what? Praise. But if I pray in my understanding, but my understanding is unfruitful. This is a scripture in your Bible. And how many of you know that you can pray in a tongue and you pray in the spirit, it says, or you can pray in your natural understanding. Understanding is what you know, what you figured out, things you know about. But you can get over into the spirit and pray in a tongue. Now, if this isn't for everybody, God's not fair. So we went over this and made it about as easy as you can make it. And we've had eight or nine people filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. Every person can pray in tongues. Every person. Every person will not have the ministry gift of tongues, which is standing before a church, giving a message and an interpretation coming. But every person in this room, I'll say this, should pray in tongues. If you don't, you're halfway doing what you're supposed to do. Can we be real? Because you need to be able to pray in the spirit and the understanding. This is good stuff. How many of you are spirit-filled believers? Some, Some people say, well, I've never done that. I just don't think that's for me. It is for you. And the thing is, what you need to understand is every person, I prayed in the Spirit all the way here in my Jeep, all the way here, from my driveway to this church. One, now, here's, we're going to get into, this will help us for today, too, because we're talking more about uh, uh, the ultimate final finality and uh, finale of the Holy Ghost. But really, we want this to be a Spirit-filled church. When we're out on outreaches and in our 18-wheeler, we don't want you jumping out with your best abilities. I have very, I'm very skilled in this. I'd rather have somebody anointed than skilled. You don't know how well I can sing and I can carry a note. I'd rather have anointing. I'd rather have anointing. I'm the greatest piano player, guitar player, drum player. I'd rather have the most anointed. You can pay all them other people down at the bars all you want to. Give me some anointing. Because anointing will set the captive free. Amen. You can go, when you going to pay a great guitar player to come in here? We're not. If God can't bring them in, we won't. Amen. <laughs> Number one, you got to be hungry. And if you're not hungry and we almost know that we can't get rid of your tail, that's number one prerequisite for being up here. Amen. Man, on fire. Your fire needs to get off on people you're leading. Amen. Not about somebody that's got, oh, I tell you what, I, they can do this or they can do that. Doesn't matter about that. Now, I'm off on this a little bit, but not really. Because uh, once you learn how to get into his presence and get into the spirit, into the spirit, I'll say this, praying in other tongues is an exercise to move you into the spirit. Say move. 
See, until you move into the Spirit, by default, you came in here in the, in the flesh. Everybody from your car to here, if you didn't on purpose get into the Spirit, we can't just get you there. Oh, man, praise the Lord. See, we can't just put you in the Spirit. Pastor Ryder, get me in the Spirit. you got to know how to move there, get there, be a person that is spiritual. Man, this is, this is a finale, so we're going to end it right. And I hadn't even got to the Word yet. My job's not to get you in the Spirit. Your job's to get yourself over from the flesh and your understanding. What if God bypassed your understanding with your answer? What if this Scripture's true and they, you could get in the Spirit and find your answer right there? I stopped listening to everybody telling me tongues wasn't for today. And I said, thank God I did. That's not for now. Everybody can't pray. And I don't have that gift. I ignored that stuff long ago. And I said, if I can read about it, I don't need you telling me it's not. If I can study it in the Bible and break it down, I don't need your opinion that this ain't for me. If I was a devil, I sure wouldn't want you doing this. If I was a devil, I'd want you down, bound up by your understanding because I know a lot of y'all don't know a lot. <laughs> like me. Oh, I'm not putting you down. I don't know. This little old joker from Minden, Louisiana just don't know. See, and it's a very prideful thing to think you do know. I got this figured out. How you got it figured out? <laughs> Man. We won't go there right now. Go over to your Bibles. Let's go over here because here's the deal. The finale of this looks like something. And if you're led by the Spirit, the Spirit's going to move you. Say moved. Spirit's going to move you. If there's a person in here who is sitting neutral, you're not being led by the Spirit. You have to move, and I'll just say how I titled it, move it or lose it. Say, move it. Look at the person next to you right now. Say, move it. See, it's time to just move it or, watch this, you're going to lose it. If you don't learn how to move it, you will Luke, go over here to Hebrews 12, verse 1. Hebrews 12, 1, we're going to start today. Father, again, we thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. We thank you in Jesus' name that you are alive in this place, living and active, talking to the hearts of people, causing them to move out into their victory, move out into what you've called them to and walk out the perfect will of God in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. If you're not filled with the Spirit and don't pray in other tongues, you can today. Don't take five years to get it. You can get it right now. You must be hungry for it, though. I can't, you can't read Scripture like we put up and say, I don't know if I want that. That's, that's not the hunger that's going to get you victory. Now, we got books you can read up on it. But if you just want to read up, just to read up, just to read up, just to read up. We found out there's people like that. I'm studying that for about another five years, and then I'll get it. Man, what if Peter would have said that? Lord walked by Peter. He said, uh, follow me. What if Peter would have said well, give me a few years. He said, I'm, I got some fishing to do. I got a fishing business, and I got to figure out who I'm going to turn the business over to. The Bible says he dropped his nets and took off. If he'd have waited three years, Jesus would have been on the cross. He'd have missed his whole call, and he'd have missed his whole ministry. Say, move it or lose it. Because there's some things not up to God, it's up to you. And if you don't learn how to get moving, Holy Spirit is going to un give you an unction, but he's also going to give you a... I wish I had a, a rhyming word, but I'm not going to put that in there. He's going to give you a movement. Holy Spirit's always moving. He's never sitting still. If your life is boring, you're not following God the way you're supposed to. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin. Say, and sin. Weights and sins, they're different. See, the weight might be you working too much. Not a sin, but you need to change what's on your plate. If you got too much on your plate to follow God, then take something off your plate. That's a weight. There's things that can weigh you down in life that aren't sin necessarily, but they're getting you out of the will of God. Amen. Let us throw aside. Let us. Who? Let who? Let who? Is God going to take that off you? No. Man, this is messed. It, it, you get quiet when you say stuff like that. Is God going to take the weights off of you? Deliver me. I need deliverance now. I need deliverance. Take it off of me. No. 
You take it off. How about you? We done, if, you, if you're missing Wednesday night, you're missing half your life on Bible study. Talking about the kingdom of God and walking in the rain and all of the kind of things. Kings rule and reign in life. And we're going over some things that are vital for your faith walk. And I believe this right now. The people that are here are the people God has called here. I believe this. I could be sitting here saying, Lord, we're going on outreaches every, every month for 12 months to other states. You sure you got all the right people in here? I want to see radical hunger, on fire, sold out believers who know how to be led by the Spirit, ready to run. I don't like, I don't want to see nobody. No, let's just get, but, but watch this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're surrounded by, let us throw aside every weight. We got to get rid of our mindsets of whatever we brought with us. And just say, you know what? rest of my life is going to be sold out to King Jesus. When I got saved September 19th of 1995, I said, Lord, I don't, I don't know if I can do one thing for you, but take me and do whatever you can. I didn't come with no prideful attitude. Lord, I don't know much. Don't, I know I like sports. I like kids. He said, I'll take that and I'll work with you. And I started ministering to kids, 11 and 12-year-old kids, and he grew the gift in me. And watch, watch this. If you're called to be apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, or a pastor, God's going to take your faithfulness where you are to get you over there to where you're going. But you got to learn how to take the things. I had to throw off weight after weight after weight after weight, and I'm still throwing off weight. How about you? Praise God. So uh, let us throw aside and lay aside all the weights and sin that do so easily ensnare us. Say easily. Is it easy for sin to ensnare you? Yeah, the Bible says. Now, if you think, oh, no, not me. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not prone to that. You got flesh, and it's easily, easily can happen for you. But in, watch this. We're, but there's a way that it doesn't have to. Amen. Keep going right here. Let us, let us, let us uh, weigh, weigh aside and every sin that does so easily ensnares. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Watch this. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2, looking or fixing, looking unto Jesus, the author. What does looking unto Jesus do? Help you run. Watch this, as long as I'm fixed, one translation says fixing our eyes on Jesus. As long as I'm fixed, I'm running. What is looking at Jesus do? It makes you to run. Amen. Watch this, as long as I'm looking at him, I can run my race. When I start looking off over here and off over there and at Facebook and CNN and all of the things and the news and the Fauci's and all of this, I start slowing down. And I'm not running like I need to run. But I just wanted to show you this because this is a faith race from beginning to end. Say faith race. And if you're not real good at racing and running and running in faith, let us finish. Jesus, looking unto Jesus, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Now we're going to get into something. We might even move right on into faith. But watch this. He's going to finish your faith. Who's going to finish it? Who started it? He's the author. He's the finisher. He put it on my heart. He's going to bring it to pass. But he needs me to move. And if I'm not running, he can't help me. The Holy Spirit will lead you to begin to run your race. You won't win this on your couch. You won't win it at your house. You won't win this praying just for your family. You won't get the victory just fixed on Fort Walton Beach. Not in this church. This thing is regional. We don't have 18 wheelers to go crank them up and say, hallelujah, we got trucks. Some of y'all better get ready. We've got to run like you've never seen running before. And here's the deal. We don't need everybody. I know everybody look at me and say, I don't know if I'm doing all that. I ain't going up there, going over there, going to do this. You don't have to. We need a handful. Amen. Just a handful that'll say, put me on. Need somebody checking air in them tires. Need somebody being the maintenance man out there working them trucks. Amen. Need somebody that'll say, you know what? I got time. Amen. I don't want to hear somebody say, well, if I got time. I don't, no, 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 no. <laughs> need somebody say, I got time. And if I don't have it, I know how to make it. I mean, you know, God's not looking for your excuse on when I get time. I'm going to get excited about God. 
God's not fitting into your schedule. He don't need your, he's not a convenience God. He is one that's out there running. Say running. Moving. Move it or lose it. Now what if you lost the plan of God, the will of God, the, the, the job God had for you? What if you lost out on God's future? Can you? Yes. I know people right now who are going to die and leave this earth and not fulfill the plan of God for their life. The saddest thing you could ever see. Don't serve God. Don't live for God. Don't pray. Don't go to church. Don't serve. Don't, get, don't hook up with the body. And I know them. They're not far from leaving. And I watch them. And there ain't so much you can do for so many people. But I promise you this. I mean, knowing that I have an author and a finisher that's going to help me along the way. Yeah, all I got to do is let it, I'll fix my eyes on him and I can run. If I fix my eyes on the computer, on the Facebook, on the internet, on the Instagram, on the tweets, on all of the stuff, and on the Fox, and on the CNN, and all of that, all of a sudden, I've been stolen from. If you can tell me more about worldly events than you can heavenly events. This month, I go to Apopka. I'm preaching the last weekend in February in Apopka to stir them up about outreach. I better bring a church here that's stirred up about outreach. <laughs> I might take five, but I'm taking somebody excited. Amen. <laughs> we might take four, but I'm taking somebody that's fired up, ready to go. Said, let's go win the lost, heal the sick, raise the dead. Let's go. I'm ready to run. Amen. I think I can give you two hours, and I can give you. Boy, well, let's hit the road. We might hit it. Praise the Lord. Exodus 14, if you would, verse 13. Exodus 14, verse 13. Faith, race. Say faith, race. From beginning to end. From the time you got born again, it had nothing to do with your intellect, your knowledge, your degree, nor your education. Quit telling your kids if you get a good education, you can be successful. You are lying to them 100 out of 100 times. You can get a good degree and not know the Holy Spirit, not follow the plan of God, not be led by the Spirit, led by money, led by people, led by the flesh, led by a good-looking dude, and be out of the will of God. Say amen. <laughs> I'm lost. Some of y'all, there's a lot of people sleeping in here today, too. It ain't two or three. It's about five, six, seven, eight. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You ought to see, just, just if you could see what I see. We love you and God loves you and who knows. You might have worked graveyard last night and it's an effort for you to get here. Praise the Lord. We don't ever lie. I, I, I pick on people, but a lot of people need to understand that I'm a picker. Amen. I play and I pick. Praise God. Don't get offended. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Exodus 14, 13. Praise God. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you this day. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will never see again. Now, I want to paint the picture for you. I know all of you are Bible people and you already know this. Moses was leading the people and he told Pharaoh, let my people go. Let my people go. Let my people. And then finally, he let them go. But all of a sudden, Pharaoh, it says, go to the NIV right there if you could, uh, legend, praise the Lord. I think that's what I read it out of. Stand, I like the word stand firm. Say stand firm. Do not be afraid. Hallelujah. Fear not. Stand, no. Did I say, that's NIV. NIV, praise the Lord. NIV, praise God. NIV says, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see. Was God just going to do it or did they have to stand firm? There's something they had to learn to do and they had to learn to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. He had them moving and he directed them. And as soon as he delivered them from the hand of the enemy, he sent them on the move. And he put them on the move and he says, do not fear, do not be afraid. You're about to see a great victory. Now all of a sudden he sends them and he leads them and directs them right to a sea. And there's an army coming behind them. Now what you need to see right here is all of a sudden, Pharaoh's army, they just got delivered from, was coming back to get them again. Oh, you need to hear this, some of you. Because watch this, the enemy wants some of you back. He let them go and then he said, what am I doing? I need them. He tried to get me back many times. I started preaching. He started... He, 
How many of you know the devil would love to have you back? Oh, look at this. He's trying to get him back. See, the devil don't want you shouting and rejoicing in here. He wants you to think this song, oh, it's a boring deal, don't mean a thing. No, he wants you back. He'd love to have you hitting weed again. Some of you ain't quit yet, but it's time. <laughs> You're not going to fulfill the will of God doing it. The drink and the smoke and the stuff, there's things out there that are hindrances to walking in faith. Say amen. But watch this, deliverance of the Lord, he will bring you this day. They had a promise of victory. The Lord just spoke and he answered him. He said, he answered the people, said, do not be afraid. I mean, you got to think, they looking at Moses like, big daddy, you just brought us out here. And you leading us and you don't know what you're doing. They got mad at Moses and wanted to stone him. They said, this joker, joker. I said joker again. I didn't mean to call Hockaday that, but uh, <laughs> that's a Louisiana term, I guess. They said, this guy, this old dude done led us out here to face the Red Sea with an army behind us. There's an army coming behind us and a Red Sea in front. What are we doing? Let's say, good job, Moses. You know what you're doing, don't you? No, they probably like, you know what? We ought to kill this joker now. He got us in a mess here. He led us out here. Now we're in a big pickle. We got the Red Sea in front of us and the armies behind us. Nowhere to go. But they were led there. Hmm. They were led there because they were about to see. How many of you want to see God do this? I mean, you want to see God show up and deliver. I mean, you want to see God bring his healing power to every out. Watch this. He said, I got to get you on the move or you won't see nothing. Now, they get there, though, and they're stuck. And all of a sudden, it says they people began to cry out to the Lord. And the Lord said, stop crying out to me. What if you got in your hardest place you've ever been in? And God said, quit praying. I thought it was amazing the counsel that Brother Jim had for that one lady. She said, I've been praying and confessing and reading my Bible all I know to do to get my victory. I love what he told her. Here's what I want you to do for two weeks. Don't pray. Don't read your Bible. And don't confess a scripture. Oh, we're a works mentality church. We think we can do enough to get God to make his word happen for us. You've, you've been hoodwinked and deceived to think you can do something to make God do something. <laughs> he already did it. Oh, it's just learning how to walk in it. Now watch this. It's a race. It's a faith race from beginning to the end. Say faith race. And you got to learn how to move when he says move and go where he says go. Even if it's to your, what if you're at your hardest place and God told Moses, I didn't make a mistake. I put you with a Red Sea in front of you and an army chasing you down and behind and you're in my perfect will. Now we're talking about being led by the Spirit, but watch this, the Spirit will move you. And here's the deal, if you pray in tongues and the Spirit don't move you, check up on what you're praying. I'm a tongue talker. i got to see if you'll move. Because if the Holy Spirit's really filling you, you'll step out in faith and you'll move when he says move. You'll go when he says go. You'll sell everything if he says to. So many people, they're not faith people. They are reasoning people. If they got it, they'll give it. If they do, they, if they have it, it'll be okay. When their ducks get in order, then they'll step out in faith. But what if he told you to go and you don't have a dime? Jesus says, take nothing with you but a purse. Huh? I need everything covered. You got to tell me I'm going to have a retirement plan. You got to tell me my kids are going to get fed. You don't have any faith. He's been trying to get some of y'all to step out for years and you hadn't done it. And you're not going to have the victory you could have. There's a good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Some of us are stuck in good. And that's saved and on the way to heaven. Pleasing is you starting to walk with him a little bit and serving in the church and, but, and, 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 and get, finding a little bit out about him and le learning in Bible study. But the perfect will of God is I'm over here stepping when he says step, going when he says go, doing when he says do. Oh my. It is fun and it is exciting and I don't have to bungee jump or skydive. I walk by faith. 
And I see things that other folks don't see. Did you hear me? I'm seeing things other people can't see. Why? Because here's the deal. If you don't learn, how many of you want to see the deliverance of the Lord? I want to see God do this. See God do that. It's up to you, not Him. You got to move and get to the Red Sea. And God even told Moses, tell the people to please stop their praying. If you keep praying, you a dead joker. Joker. All you jokers are going to die. <laughs> Every joker over there is going to be dead. There's an army coming. There's a devil that wants you back. There's a devil that wants some of y'all back. Oh, we'd love to have you dealing again. Huh? He'd love to have you dealing again. He'd love to see you locked up again. He'd love to see you depressed again. He's coming. How you, Lord, deliver me. He said, okay, it's going to be fun. How many of you would love to see the deliverance of the, God's going to tell you to do something. He's going to move you to move. The Holy Spirit, people that are filled with the Spirit. I didn't stay on talking in tongues long, but I'll tell you this. And, I, and, I, and on purpose, because there's so many tongue talkers I see don't do a thing. Why are you speaking in tongues? What are you doing? It's so you can get stirred to move. If I'm filled with a Spirit that's always on the move, and all I do is show up and spray, pray in tongues, and I don't ever move, we got to, again, check ourselves to see if I have what he, he says that I really got. He's going to take me to places where it's going to look like I'm about to go under. It, God better be God. He said, you're going to see the deliverance of the Lord. You won't be able to work a plan B up. You won't be able to draw a diagram. You won't be able to make an Excel spreadsheet. You won't be able to say how it's going to get paid. You won't be able to say how your kids are going to get on fire. You won't be able to say it, but until you can step on it. This is for my Holy Ghost people in here too. If this don't excite you, you're not, I want to be the one that's out there. Not a lot of people are going to step out. One person stepped out of the boat when Jesus said, walk on the water. Peter. Rest of them had to talk about Peter walking on water. I don't want to talk about Smith Wigglesworth ever again. I want to see what this is for ourselves. I, don't, I love Brother Hagin. I don't want to talk about what they did. I want to see us do it. I don't want to talk about John G. Lake. I want to be the person who is the next walking with the power in our hand. We touch them on the streets. Watch it happen. Here's what we've been coming to. Here's what we've been coming to. This is what the Lord's been bringing us to 26 years. This is going to be a mighty move of a mighty Holy Spirit who we're going to stand firm and we're about to see the salvation of the Lord bless. There has to be some excitement about that. Oh, I just need my bills paid and I'll be fine. I'd like to feel a little better then I'll be okay. I want to see the Holy Spirit use me in my last days. I want to see the Holy Spirit when I touch somebody, watch them stand up. I want to see. Now watch this. What you need to understand too about Brother Jim being here, God will not put a show on for you. See, what you got to be careful of is those are special meetings. Listen to me. We have special meetings that come through church. And what I found out is this, people like to go to, I want to see an arm grow out, I want to see a leg grow out, I want to see multiple healings every service. And then we think we go to church to see those things. We miss the whole point. You get it here to take it there. You get it in here so you can go out there with it. It's not about, now God becomes our show. And I've been to those churches where something got to happen every service. What if you just had to be stirred up to say, you know what, you're about to see. God, do something in your kids you never thought you'd ever see. You're about to see your job, your business, your ministry, what God's called you. He had to get you out of there to get you over here. They wanted to go back. How many of you have thought, man, this is just too hard? I'm a faith person, but man, this is rough. <laughs> I was having fun with the fellas. Anybody but me? Man. Now I'm talking about being for real. I lost every friend, lost everything, lost everybody. It's gotten rough. I've had multi multiple episodes of depression. Multiple depression hits me. 
Because I lost every friend I ever had and my family even thought I was crazy. And that's even recent. I've had to go through things that you have to fight through. And if you're looking for an easy little walk with the Lord, where everything's going to be easy and everything's going to just land in your lap and oh, praise the Lord God. Now you're going to have to learn how to run this race. And if you're not a good runner and not a good fighter, I'll tell everybody all the time, you, you try losing everything you ever had. To walk with a God that you never heard about till you was 23. You try leaving a city where you knew everybody to a place where you knew nobody. You try that. Go ahead. It's easy for everybody to come in and get excited because the preacher sweats all the time and he gets me so happy. Not here to get you happy. Not here to make you feel good. Here to get you to a place where when the Holy Spirit tells you to move, you'll move. Not here to try to get you filled with the Spirit and speak in tongues because we're a tongue-talking church and you can do like us. No, you should be and everybody should be so that you can be in tune to the Spirit when He does move you to go stand in front of Pharaoh and say, let my... And when you stand before mayors, some of, some of you are going to stand before governors. And the Bible says you'll stand before them with no fear and no intimidation. I've stood in front of people, I'm like, I don't know what this little old dude's doing here, but praise God. And watch God be God. He don't need your help and he don't need your degree. <laughs> I got a degree in this. Big deal. What you doing? How many revivals are starting? That's ready. I'm so ready. Man, you don't even know I'm jumping up and down on the inside. Watch this. Do not fear. Stand firm and you'll see the deliverance of the Lord. The Egyptians that you see today, you will never see again. If I could tell you right now, the depression, the fear, the lack, the anxiety attacks, the uh, addiction that you carry, and the, the enemy that is chasing you back down, trying to get you again. Anybody could testify in here that the same things you had you before is coming after you again, but take a look, wave bye-bye, and say, we never going to see you again. I'm never going to go through that again. I will never go through that again. Somebody say, I'll never go through that again. <laughs> the Egyptians, you see, they're trying to get you back. They're coming back. They got, you got delivered from them, now they want you again. You got delivered from the weed, the weed wants you again. The alcohol wants you again. That thing wants you again. But God says, if you'll just move forward, if you'll get here, watch this. What did he do? He lifted up the rod. And when he lifted up the rod, the Bible told, God told Abraham, he told Moses right here, move forward. Begin to go forward and you'll see. The deliverance of the Lord. He lifted his rod up. He's like, what do I? He said, what do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? See, you got enough right now. Man, some of y'all need to get this. This is not the hospital. This is where everybody needs a lot. Of, no, this, you need to understand, we're here to tell you, you got it. Everybody say, I got this. I'm just going to lift up the rod and watch. Now, I've hooked up with God, and I'm not sitting there crying out. Moses said, stop praying, guys. We're about to die if you keep that up. We got to go that way. They said, what way are we going? That way. <laughs> Y'all follow me. Where are we going, Moses? That way. Go stand in front of the Gulf of Mexico down there at the beach and tell everybody, Y'all follow me. Where are you going? That way. Where are you headed? That way. What? Right out into the gulf? Yeah, but just follow me. You think God won't have you do some things look silly? You think God's going to always have you to be the person? See, if you're the one who's always trying to be prim and proper and don't want to look sometimes, a it's going to look strange to follow God sometimes. I know we think it's just good. Oh, man. That's just the problem with a lot of the churches around that just tell you to be a good person. Just be good, just be good, just be good. Still be the person you kind of were, but just be a better version of that person. We're not telling you that. I'm telling you to throw off everything old and put on everything new. And watch what God can 
do. He says, now I'm a new creation, born anew that I may do the good works that he prearranged and made ready for me to do. But I got to put on that new man and step back. Well, here's the deal. Holy Spirit might lead you. It's funny as the leader too. People are like, how's that going to happen? I remember casting the vision for outreach in the region. I said, we're going to be a regional ministry. I'm looking at five old ladies. <laughs> we're going out on the streets to preach this word. They said, five older ladies than me. They were older than me. Mildred's in heaven. I preached her funeral. I can't wait to see her. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's get out of here. I don't even know what time. I didn't wear my watch today. Some of y'all like, you're way over. No, I'm right on time. <laughs> Being directed by my daughter. She said, stay on the stage. Okay. She positioned the camera. She's like, get on the stage. They could just see your head running around down there. <laughs> Every now and then, my arm I go up. And it's like, <laughs> Amen. We good? We all right? Praise the Lord. The enemy wants you back. He wants you back. He's going he to come back after you again. Just to see if he can get you, catch up with you. Who are the people he can catch? The ones who won't step. Did, I, did, I, did you hear me? How many of y'all had some friends got delivered from alcohol, drugs, abuse, uh, all kind of things, but they, they got delivered, but they went back? Enemy comes immediately to steal what was sown from the very beginning. Just listen to me. That fire that you got, it has to be a fire that's a faith that says, I'm a, I, I will never let go. I'll never quit. I didn't get saved for six months. I'm in this for the next 60 years. And I'm going to be more fired up next week than I am this week. And you got to learn that if everybody around you gets lackadaisical and gets lazy, because they will, I'm not dependent on your fire. I'm going to be as excited as I can get just from me. Say amen. I don't need 52 people to amen me and throw checks on the, on the stage. We're going to do what God said do. Whether four come, five come, two come. Amen. But we need some folks who will say, you know what, Holy Spirit, I'm believing you're going to lead me and guide me and direct me. I'm believing that you're going to take me on an outreach in these outreaches that we do in our parking lot and on the streets. And you're going to lead me to the person who needs the anointing that I carry. And I'm going to be a dispenser of the glory. And I'm going to touch them because pastor won't even know about them. But I'm going to get them healed. I'm going to get them filled. I'm going to get them delivered. I'm going to be led by the Holy Ghost. This is vitally important for the message of this church. We're casting vision in two weeks. Middle of, I wanted to do this uh, middle of February, or maybe, is it next week? The no, week after, because next week's Super Bowl Sunday. Please bring a friend next week, wear your jersey. We're going to do, but we're looking for people sold out and on fire. Again, I know there's places where you can go and sit and get a little lecture and get a Bible study and, and get a little motivational speech and then leave and blah, 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 blah. That's it, and then you come back. We're looking for people who are sold out and on fire. Anybody like that? Praise the Lord. I mean, really, 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 really. I don't know. I, sometimes I can't even say words. Here lately, that's never been my problem. I've always got words. But here lately, it's like there's no words for what's about to hit. When we are jumping in on, on motorhomes and in 18-wheelers and in box trucks and inflating and blowing up and going out and bringing the gospel to other places we're led to go to, that I've been talking about for 10, 11, 12 years. Watch what is, a, we ain't, you don't have any idea how big this is about to be. And it could look, some of us are at a hard place right now. That's the problem. Some of us are at a hard place right now. Can I help you? You'll see the deliverance of the Lord from your hard place when you learn to step by faith before you see anything. And we're going to need folks that are led, 
spirit filled, ready to go, and realize. And all I can tell you is like he said, the things that you saw in your past, you'll never see again. You want supernatural deliverance? It's dependent on you running your race. God's not coming to lay hands on you in your living room and fall out in the spirit and jerk and jiggle. I got it. No, no. It's going to be like the Bible. And the Bible talks about stepping for your, running for your deliverance. Walking out your deliverance. There is supernatural deliverance for the hungry. But for not, not for the people who are looking for a show. Amen. And I'd like to ask real quick, the hungry, the hungry, you need to be filled, need to be refilled, need to be stirred up. We're headed out next month, and we need everybody. Stand to your feet real quick, praise God. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many would love, and I'm going to say this, I don't know who this is for, but if you'll step out the way God instructed Moses to, some of you there's going to be a deliverance that you've been, and you're going to be like, it was, it was there all the, oh my, and you'll never see that addiction again, depression again, anxiety attack again. Things you've been going through will leave, but you got, God won't give it to you in the seat you're sitting in. He's going to say today, if you'll step out, you're going to see the supernatural, and things you've been going through, you'll never see again. If that's you, come to the front. Hallelujah, come to the front. If that's you and you know it's you and you say, I, that, there's some things in my life, I believe God, that I want, and you, or you may need to be filled or refilled, filled or refilled. You may say, I need this for what I have coming next in my life. See, some of you don't understand, the stepping out into the next place, the supernatural, the power of God is real. He is ready to use you in a mighty way. You're not lesser than, you're greater than. God's going to take you on the streets, in your job, at the places of your work, and you're going to start seeing supernatural things take place while you're at work, while you're at school. There has to be a hunger for that. This altar call is just if you're hungry to see God move in a mighty way through you and to get touched, filled, or refilled. How many of you coming to get filled with the Holy Ghost? Amen. Filled or refilled? Raise your hand. Praise God. Filled or refilled? Woo! Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, Danielle. Praise God. Everybody out there, extend your hands toward these. Praise the Lord. Come on, Danielle, if you would, to go, go down and just lay hands on them. Everybody join hands. I'll tell you what. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everybody say this with me. Father God, fill me afresh, anew, in the Spirit. Thank you, Father. From this day forward, you lead me. You guide me. You direct me. Take me to places that I will see the wondrous works of the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Pat. Sing something. Hallelujah. Glory to God.